Here are some problems related to fuels for internal combustion engine. Guidance problem solving number one. Calculate the minimum volume in cubic meter of a day tank of 28 degree API fuel having a fuel consumption of 1 kilogram per second. This is how our day tank looks like. So we have the main storage tank where we get our supply for our fuel and then all the pumping piping systems going to the generator. So the day tanks are an above ground emergency source of fuel for standby power generators that are sized to automatically maintain 12 to 4 hours of fuel immediately next to the gen set usually drawn from a larger fuel farm or tank located elsewhere nearby. So to calculate for the minimum volume, first we need to determine the specific gravity at the standard condition. So this is given by the formula, the gray API is equals to 141.5 over the specific gravity at 15.56 degrees Celsius or that's standard minus 131.5. So we have to substitute the value of degrees API which is 28 from the given to that formula for us to obtain the value of the specific gravity standard. Then solving for SGS we have our specific gravity standard is 0 0.8871. Next is to calculate the density of the fuel. We multiply the SGS by the density of the water for us to get the density of the fuel. And that is 887.1 kilogram per meter cube. And we can calculate the volume using the density mass and volume formula. So volume is just equal to mass over the density. We are given with the mass of the fuel that is one kilogram per second. But since this is a day tank, it will supply for 24 hours. So we just calculate equivalent kilogram consumption in 24 hour. So we convert one kilogram per second to kilogram by multiplying it with 24 hours where there is 3,600 seconds in an hour divided by the density that's why we have the volume the minimum volume for the day tank needed to supply one kilogram per second of 20 degree API fuel is 97.40 meter cube so that's a huge uh, container. Added problem solving number two. Fuel oil in a day tank for use of an industrial boiler is tested with hydrometer. A hydrometer is an instrument used for measuring the relative density of liquids based on the concept of buoyancy. The reading indicates a specific gravity of 0 0.924 when the temperature of the oil tank is 35 degrees Celsius. So calculate the API rating of the fuel. So based on the given, we are given with the SG at a particular temperature, meaning this SG of 0 0.924 is not our SGS, but our SGP. So our um, flow of solution is for us to get the value of SGS, and then from that SGS, we can obtain the known which is API rating. So we calculate a specific gravity at standard condition using our correction factor. So substituting from the given where in SGT is 0 0.94 and the T is 35, our SGS can be computed as 0 0.9371. And since we have a relationship between SGS and API and it is given by this formula, we can convert, we can substitute that for us to get API, which is 19.5 degrees API. So our fuel oil is 19.5 degrees API. Guided problem solving number three. Diesel power plant uses fuel with a heating value of 43,000 kilojoules per kilogram 
what is the density of the fuel at 25 degree Celsius. So we are looking for the density of the fuel at a particular temperature. So therefore, we need to get the value of its SGT and multiply it with 1000 for us to get the density of the fuel. And in order for us to get the SGT, we need to have first the SGS. We can get SGS from the relationship of SGS, API, and heating value. So for calculating API, since this is a petroleum product, our diesel is a petroleum product, we can use the heating value as 41,130 plus 139.6 times degrees API. So when we substitute the heating value to the formula, we can get the degrees API, and that is 13.95. Since we already have the degrees API, we can now compute for the SGS. And that is based on the relationship. This is 141.5 divided by SGS minus 131.5. So by substituting, we can get our SGS as 0 0.9765. And since we already have the SGS, we need to, to use the correction factor to get the SGT. So we multiply it by the correction factor so that our SGT is 0 0.96989. So as you can see with the increase in temperature, there is a decrease in the specific gravity of the fuel. And since we already have SGT, we just multiply it with 1000 for us to get the required density of the fuel at 25 degrees Celsius. So the density of the fuel is 969.89 kg per meter cube. Added problem solving number four. The ultimate analysis of coal is given carbon 68.5%, hydrogen 2.5%, sulfur 1.5%, oxygen 3.5%, ash 12%. Calculate the heating value of coal. Since this is a solid product, then we can use the Dulong's formula. Just substitute the value of carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen and sulfur in decimal form. And finally, we can get the heating value of the coal as 26,280.63 kilojoules per kilogram. Gadget problem solving number five. A bituminous coal has the following composition. Carbon, 71.5%. Oxygen, 7%. Sulfur, 3.6%. Moisture content, 3.4%. Hydrogen, 5%. Ash, 8.2%. Calculate the theoretical weight of air required in kilogram air per kilogram coal. Since we already have the composition and we are given with the formula for solid fuel as a stoichiometric air fuel ratio as 11.5 C plus 34.5 multiplied by the quantity H minus O over 8 plus 4.3 sulfur, and we just substitute the decimal form so that we can get the stoichiometric weight of air in kilogram air per kilogram coal, and that is 9.8 kilogram air, air per kilogram fuel. Guided problem solving number six. It is required to find the theoretical volume of air at 20 degrees Celsius and 100 kilopascal absolute to burn one kilogram of Franklin country oil. Ultimate analysis of coal is C, 65.65%. .65%. O, 18.61%, moisture content 3%, hydrogen 5.87%, sulfur 1.21%, and ash 5.36%. So using our ideal gas equation, since we are looking for the theoretical volume of air, since this is an ideal gas, and we're given with temperature and pressure, and the equation that we can use relate volume, pressure, and temperature with mass is our 
MRTV is equals to MRT. We can rearrange that so that we can get the equation for the volume of air per one kilogram. That's why we have V over M is equals to RT over P. When we multiply both sides by the air fuel ratio, we can see that we can cancel out the mass of air on the left side of the equation, leaving us with the volume of air per mass of the fuel or mass of the coal. And consequently, on the left side, we are we have the product of the air fuel ratio multiplied by the RT over P of air. So we need to calculate for the stoichiometric air fuel ratio for solid fuel using our formula. And that is 8.837 kilogram air per kilogram coal. And now we can use that, substitute that in the formula along with the gas constant of air that is 0 0.87 and we convert the given temperature to Kelvin and the pressure that is 100 kPa absolute is retained. So that's why we have the volume of air per kilogram of coal is 7.43 meter cube air per kilogram coal. So that's how you analyze the different properties of fuel given the different quantities.